I got quite a few questions about these pink pearl apples, so I thought I would show you one. Um, looks fairly normal, kind of a yellowish, greenish color on the outside. Of course, it's organic because it came from my uh, friends at Space Girl Organics. Anyway, so yeah, very normal little apple. I have a little desk right here, of course, right away from me where you can see it. And also, yes, I haven't put the light kit together yet. It's been a little intense around here, but I will make this relevant in just a moment as well. Assuming it stays up. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and cut a little piece of this apple so you can see what's going on inside. So let's make this a little bit more fun. Okay, so regular apple and it's pink inside and it's delicious. These are really sweet, really tart, and really unusual. And I'm pretty sure if anyone child or adult, were to get one of these in a lunchbox. It would be a very cool surprise. They're also about two bucks a piece, um, so you probably won't find a bag of them um, places. They only come around certain times of the year. So, why is this relevant? This is one of those oh, <laughs> ubiquitous desk lamps that we've all... Here we go. Now you can see it. Okay. Not the greatest video light, but it's sufficing for now. So why is it relevant? It makes me think of the company Pixar, which, as you know, has that little desk lamp that hops out and does its little thing at the beginning. Anyway, why is that relevant? Uh, recently at the LaGuardia Airport, um, I found a little area that there's, like, giveaway books and stuff. There's one, of course, in the... Um, Delta Sky Club, but there's also one that's outside, and I hate to say this, but I'd argue that the one that's outside sometimes is a little bit better, and it's got uh, this book. Uh, it was a, uh, it's an advanced reader's edition, so some of these type of books have um, typos in it and whatnot, and I'm used to reading things in typos because I edit for a few people, but anyway, this book is very cool. It's um, from Ed Catmull, and he's the president of Pixar Animation and Disney Animation, and it's actually a business book. Um, it's about kind of um, managing creativity and managing, you know, innovative uh, workspaces and managing very high-performance teams. And while I don't work with a lot of teams specifically, um, I do really like the ideas that are in here that help leaders kind of foster um, a creative environment, a non-stifling environment, and also an environment where coworkers can trust each other and really kind of delight in each other's skills, um, kind of where my skills end, your be yours begin, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, so really surprisingly enjoying this. Um, I'm at the part right now that they're um, kind of teaming up with Steve Jobs, and some of his impressions of Steve Jobs are actually pretty funny. Scary, but funny. Uh, makes me look really mellow, so um, of course I think it's hysterical. Anyway, so that's enough show and tell there. Next item, if you are one of those wise and wonderful people who already is a certified Dragon Door instructor of some type, HKC, RKC, RKC2, PCC, any of that good stuff, um, you're probably already receiving these in the mail. And I love these newsletters. A um, little biased because they do feature one of my own recipes every month. And some of these are actually not even on my website. This one isn't yet. Um, I like to keep them exclusive to the newsletter, but I wanted to read you about this one. Um, this is a raw food. I know that's backwards. That's all right. I just wanted you to see the picture. Um, raw kale recipe, and uh, obviously, uh, you know, I eat a lot of very high quality meats, but I do enjoy very high quality vegetables, and I do enjoy raw foods, um, not just carpaccio. But uh, this was really simple. And at um, a PCC we had in New York, um, the gym there had a daily delivery from a company called Juice Press. Normally, I don't even pay attention to that sort of thing, but I was hungry and you know, and I just didn't feel like dealing with a restaurant or whatnot. So I decided to start trying some of the little containers they had. 
right there at the gym, and one was this marinated kale that I simply got addicted to, came home, cross-referenced about 10 different recipes, and came up with my version that tastes pretty darn close to theirs. So, get your pencils ready, or typing fingers. Um, I use one bunch of raw kale. Um, hopefully the bunches are, are somewhat similar. This is like regular curly kale, not that, um, I can never say it unless I'm looking at it, La Cinto kale, that kind of Italian kale. It's wonderful, long, skinny kale leaves. Those are great, but don't use it for this. You want that curly, curly kale because we want all that surface area to pick up this delicious sauce. All right, so we have our one bunch of kale. You want to wash and dry that, remove the stems, and cut it into, you know, kind of like salad leaf pieces, you know, whatever, bite-sized pieces. Okay, in a little high-speed blender, I use one of those magic bullet blenders, don't make fun, um, and I use a small cup. I grind up um, one clove of fresh garlic, uh, four tablespoons of very high quality olive oil, the juice of one lime, get those seeds out, two tablespoons of Bragg's liquid aminos. You can use soy sauce or tamari. For whatever reason, I find the Bragg's makes this whole thing a lot less bitter. It, there's some kind of weird synergistic delicious umami thing that happens with it in the kale. And then one tablespoon of nutritional yeast and finally one tablespoon of water. So you're going to blend that whole mixture up. And um, I have a large bowl that has this nice lid. I put everything in there, I shake it up, I mix it up, I put it in the fridge, I try to leave it alone. <laughs> and you want to let it marinate for at least half an hour. Um, if you can let it marinate a little longer or a few hours, that's fantastic. Um, you can make this when you get up in the morning and then it's delicious for lunch. Sometimes I just like to pack it across the top of an avocado half. Um, it's You can add it to other salad vegetables and it kind of like brings its own dressing along with it and um, the more you can stir it up the better. Anyway, I thought you might enjoy that recipe. Now, speaking of raw food, one last item. I've been sprouting things again. Now a few years ago I got a little off the chain with this, but we're not going to talk about that right now. So these are lentils and I'm sprouting them in this little pitcher that I've put um, some cheesecloth cheese cloth across the top with some uh, rubber bands and this is great because I can rinse these out multiple times a day. I keep it over there in the kitchen next to the sink. So add some water to it, swish them around very gently. We don't want to break the sprouts off and then pour it out. But uh, yeah, so I found this little pitcher is a lot of very easy and it doesn't look too terrible. So can you see the little sprouts? I'll eat these tomorrow. Um, they'll be about perfect. Actually these are really good with that kale. Avocado, big thing of that kale, some of these, mix it all together. Ah, delicious. And um, if you're not a raw vegan, go ahead and do what I do, just to add like a patty of cooked buffalo patty with that, um, you know, with some like salt, pepper, and maybe a little bit of Cajun spice or something like that on top. It's really quite a good lunch or a little steak. Anyway, how I started these, these are regular um, green lentils, very inexpensive, even the really kind of super fancy organic ones are not that expensive and you don't need too many of them either. So you're going to put like, gosh, this was about half a cup. If you're doing a mason jar, start with a quarter cup. They do get bigger as they sprout. So you're going to let them soak overnight in cold water on your countertop. Usually that's what I do. The next day, I drain them out, give it a good rinse. I set up this type of an apparatus, and I try to rinse them like three to four times a day. So I will really be enjoying these. Now something that I thought was interesting sprouted lentils versus cooked lentils. So check this out. If you take the lentils and you cook them, um, like one of my friends loves this curried lentil thing that I do. There's curried lentil like that and they're cooked from dried. You're going to have more folate in them than you would if they were to be sprouted. Now if they're sprouted, somehow they have more iron and copper. So, you know, again, we're, we're talking about splitting hairs here in terms of nutritional. You're like, oh, I need more iron in my diet. I'm going to go eat this giant thing of, of lentils. It's not really what I'm saying, just more of a point of information. But uh, 
I love sprouted lentils. And in the summer, when you don't want to heat up the kitchen with a big boiling pot of beans, this is a great way to have them ready. They're also really, really good with um, just like a simple, simple salad dressing. If you want to do a vinaigrette, throw in some little tomatoes. Um, again, avocado can't go wrong. Maybe a little bit of uh, walnuts. I don't know, whatever you have. I love to throw things together like that. Anyway, I hope this helps, and uh, let me know what you think. I'm going to go eat this very, very coveted apple now. I hope you're not too jealous. <laughs>